Clayton Kershaw has a history of back injuries now. So how concerned are you right now, Dontrell, about this? Very concerned because he's a max effort guy. His mechanics are rare, but it's part of his strength. And if he can't get out there and get extended, you don't see the life, you won't see the command, and you'll leave balls up as he did today. So I guarantee they were concerned about him in the second and third inning. He only topped out at 89, 90 miles an hour. That's nowhere close to his velocity. So I'm almost sure that they're going to put him on the deal because they're going to need him down the stretch. And if he can't get his back right, we might be seeing the, the final decline, especially him being a max effort guy of Clayton Kershaw right, right in front of our eyes right now. Yeah, Train, I agree with you. If you look at the fifth inning, his last inning of work he threw 11 pitches he struck out the side it looks visually good mm -hmm. but he didn't throw a fastball and, and this is concerning because you said the velocity 88.2 miles an hour that's not typical for for Clayton Kershaw mm -hmm. there's three things you have to worry about from a pitching standpoint injury wise shoulder elbow and also back he has had the shoulder in the back situation that's not good. Clayton Kershaw, if you're around him, you can see it on his face. You can almost see it on his face during his start. Right. He didn't look the same. And you know what? You can't simulate that intensity when it comes to rehab work and, and simulated game. This is what Clayton Kershaw doesn't understand is going in there and having that emotion in the start. It just wasn't there tonight. And that's the scary thing when it comes down to the Dodgers rotation. They've done a good job surviving without him. Like I said, even with all the other injuries, they've had a couple guys step up. But, you know, much longer without him, they need to start winning on a more consistent basis. That's a problem. So hopefully the MRI goes okay. Hopefully Kershaw is okay. We'll cross our fingers and see. I think we could look at it and, and pretty much agree there are three elite teams in the American League, right? Very true. The Astros, Yankees, Red Sox. So in your eyes... Sween, what separates the Red Sox and the Astros? I think it's starting rotation, KB. If you look at it, I think uh, probably uh, Keuchel is probably the starter that hasn't done the damage that you would probably expect. But the other four, they've won 25 games <laughs> with that starting rotation. That's dominating. I think Garrett Cole being the number four guy. But it really comes down to your ace. And Justin Verlander has been exactly that. That's the separator for me. When you do it with pitching and you can dominate with starting pitching, you can sustain some long winning streaks. For me, the Red Sox, they already have their established closer in Craig Kimball. He comes up big. He's one of the best closers in all of baseball. So they don't really need to have to rectify that problem. The, the, the Astros are still kind of filling out guys, seeing who will fit, seeing who will stick, and seeing who they can have confidence down the line, especially against these bigger upper left echelon ball clubs. But I love the Red Sox offense, especially with J.D. Martinez arguably having an MVP, MVP season. And these offenses are similar. They both can score. They can both knock people around. But I definitely think the closer spot that the Red Sox had the advantage. Yeah, the one thing that concerns me when you think about the Houston Astros, though, is the back end. You, you saw Ken Giles tonight doing the job. But I think A.J. Hinch needs to be creative down the stretch. And it's going to be very important for him because they're only a 4-11 and 11 with one-run ball games. Yeah, That's right. scary because that can be detrimental to a clubhouse when you're not locking down wins that you have to get. Especially when you're hitting yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you can't have that guy hitting yourself down there in the back end of the bullpen. <laughs> so you got to calm that down. You don't like the face punch. No, I don't like that at all. I want to see strikeouts. So we might have to be able to get some guys, maybe use Morton down there, depending on when he started beforehand. But they have to get creative. They might have to go out and get somebody too. Well, uh, it'll be interesting, and, and their, their, their starters have been so good, it's almost uh, it's relieved the bullpen a little bit. So we'll mm -hmm. see if that becomes an issue for the Astros. Great first game of this four-game set, though. Astros win game one. The Cubs, hmm. Are, are they still the favorites? Are we just still living off the Cubs that won the World Series? Are they still the favorites in your eyes, Don Trump? Uh, I don't think so. They've been struggling on both sides of the baseball. The pitching staff has been subpar, especially the rotation, and the offense has been up and down. Javier Baez leads them in home runs, RBIs, runs scored, and stolen bases, and that cannot happen. He needs to be the side piece. Rizzo, Bryant needs to step up and be the true teeth of that lineup because if he continues to go like this, they're going to be able to pitch around guys and continue to expose the holes in their lineup right now. You know what, Trey and KB, I, I, they're not the lovable losers anymore for me. And, and I, I wonder about the likability of this club because it's been questions of, of late, especially. And you see the sliding incident that that Anthony Rizzo is involved with. This is the second time back-to-back -back years he's done that. He did it against the Padres last year. This year he goes out of his way, the sliding lane. Whatever side you're on that. But then you're looking at the Cubs, and they're starting to look for their identity. But they used to be likable. Obviously winning that, that championship was huge. 
But now it's starting to look like they're the villain. Who are yeah, they? Yeah, they're the villain. And you see a lot of bench clearing brawls. It's not August yet. And everybody's already angry at them. They're tired of the antics. And Baez is the lightning rod. So then teams want to get up against them. They want to give them their best fight. So they got to understand that they got to calm down, stay humble, play hard, and stay focused, and play clean baseball. That's important right now. And who's the leader? I mean, I I'm questioning on that. We've heard Kyle Schwarber is the leader. Anthony Rizzo, is he the leader? That's what really is in question right now. And I think Joe Madden has already set a, a tone on this in, in previous years. You're wondering uh, what's happening now. This identity of this club is a mystery to me. It's interesting because last year we all well, it was a World Series hangover, right? And, and then, like, that's hard. Everything they dealt with, kind of, it's hard. And they still got back to the League Championship Series. And then this year, okay, well, we're, what is it now? You guys pointed out some really interesting things, but... Waiting to see the real Cubs. They win tonight. It's a good start for them, and we'll see if they can get on a little bit of a road.